All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Data Enjoyers Video Game AI. Uh, we divided our group into three teams. Um, team one made a model that allows you to see crick scores, rating scores, and global sales on a game to recommend you a better game. Team two made a model that allows uh, users to insert specific requirements and find video games with the specified requirements. It's basically just a search engine for video games. And team three made a model that allows you to get predictions of an ESRB rating on a certain game. And they also made heat maps to show their data to the user. Awesome. Uh, Reese, whenever you are ready, go ahead, share your screen and walk us through that team one section. Hi. Um, good job, Jonah. It's my turn. So here we made a bot that creates graphs based on user inputs. It is a game recommender. You put in the genre, system, and ESRB rating, and out pops three visuals that suggest games. You can choose what is the most important to you, how critics scored games that fit your requirements, how users rated those games, and how many global sales that those games had. I made this because I've always wanted a game recommender that would help me discover new games. So I took initiative and proposed the idea that and propose the idea. We selected three ideas from our list, and this was one of the three that won. We took a data set and made it into something that we're proud of. Notice that there may be a different amount of games in the sections because the data is not available. Now I will briefly overview the sections that you will get after inputs. All right, in this example, I put platform in the genre section, any in the platform slash system slash console section to get the most results, and in the ESRB rating input, I put E below. Um, here, so here in the critic score is a chart that um, sh like that has the ratings from games that critics put in. Um, the ratings are low. This, this is out of ten. Um, the highest games had two out of ten because critics are harsh. I expected it to be higher, but who knows? Um, yeah. So and it shows a list of all the games that got that certain score, and this is the lowest. Justice League and Justice for All got a rating of zero. Here is practically the same chart, except it uses user ratings instead of critic ratings. It, it seems to have a lot higher ratings because it's people looking to enjoy the game, not trying to judge it. Um, yeah, um, there are a lot less games because there's just less data um, for this one. A lot of it had, there was a lot of not available. And here is the global sales by the million. So this is like um, these games reach 10 million global sales when these ones reach 2 million. And again, there's less data because there's more NAs. And here we are. This is um, now. Now I will do a live demo of this. So what you're, what I'm gonna want you guys to do is um, put um, the options you want. Type one option in chat for each section that you want to see in the demo, and I'll choose one at random. Um, so yeah. There's the options right here for the genre section, options right here for the system section, any will get the most results, and then this is for ESRB. Um, yeah, so just, all right, so um, I see that, all right, I see Graham went first, he said sandbox, SNES, and E. So we put in um, an option, I'll just copy paste sandbox. Um, SNES, um, and it has to have like the correct capitalization from here to get it, and then E. So now well, we're going to submit query. It's going to reload the page, and now if we go, um, sorry, back down, sorry, um, it has all the results. So there, there doesn't seem to be many results for this. So I'm just going to put one that will probably have more results. I'm going to put um, platform any and e this will get us quite a few results and now if we go all the way down it shows you so these are things that match these are platformers that have the rating of e and it shows like all the ones that fit what you put um these are on every system so and yeah it just shows you everything you might want um all right this is my demo all right colin you are next Fantastic. Awesome job, Reese. And then over to the rest of our teams. Colin, uh, wait, did that share right? <laughs> nope, we're good. Okay, sorry. On to that next team with Colin. Whenever you're ready, get us going.
Okay, so I made a genre predictor that can predict data off of video game genres. So if you scroll down a bit, that is uh, the NA sales from the year 2015. And you can sort the you can sort the data by different genres and see information about the sales of it of the region that you picked. And if you scroll a little bit more down, you can even put in your own uh, inputs. So uh, you can just put in whatever. We'll try NA sales in the year 2000. We will do 2010 from Activision. Submit it. And then when you scroll back down, it shows all of the data from the NA sales of the year 2010 by the publisher Activision with all the genres sorted. And um, why we made the chart is we made the chart for users to better understand the data. The chart shows the genre, the sales of the region you chose, the year when it came out, and the publisher of the game. You can filter through the genres in the chart very easily using the side genre section and selecting or unselecting them. You can also use multiple tools to get around the chart and view it better by using the tools in the top right of the chart. If we didn't have the chart, the data would be very confusing and wouldn't be so simple to sort, find, and filter. The chart also allows us to style our data to make it look better and more easy to the eyes when trying to find specifics in the data. Uh, why we made it is because it would be helpful to game developers to see what games and genres did well in a specific year to improve their game sales and players. We would allow users to input things such as a year, genre, and developer and return with a plot with that data from our data set of games. We used a video game data set from a website called Kaggle. We imported the data set into our model to use on our AI. We cleaned the code um, using some code to remove NA values and values that didn't make sense for our AI model. And we use a package or a Python package called Plotly to graph our predictions that makes our AI that our AI makes from the clean data set. And using inputs given by the user, we were able to filter out the year, publisher, and genre they want our AI to predict. And first we imported our data set. We first imported pandas and plotly so that we could use our coding language and plotly later on. And then we cleaned our data. To clean our data, we use data drop to specify which columns of data we want to drop and then use the code below to drop NAN values. We used t2data.head to check that those columns were dropped before continuing. Then adding user inputs and returning charts, we first added input variables to ask the user questions and their answers were put into a variable and fed into the plot. The plot was then returned to the user with all the data requested in an easy to understand plot. Now on to team three. Awesome job. So it's our turn now. We created an AI that predicts video game ESRB ratings. This machine learning model was created by me, and Isabel, and Jonah. Uh, you input the year, genre, and or platform of a game, and it can predict the video game's ESRB rating. Uh, our presentation today will have four sections. The first is our general goal when creating it. The second is the way we clean and process the data. The third is the method we used to create our machine learning model. And our fourth is visualizations. Our goal as Team 3 was to create an AI that could predict the ESRB rating or age range of video games given the genre, year, and the platform of the game. These predictions combined with popular genres can help developers create popular games and then market it to the correct people. The first thing we had to do to the data is to get it, obviously, and clean it. We deleted all the columns, but the name, ESRB rating, genre, developer, year, and platform, because many of the other columns were either empty or useless to us. Next, we dropped duplicates and took out the ESRB ratings E, C, A, O, and RP, because there were just too little of them to be useful. We also converted every video game rated KA to be rated E10 instead, because they are essentially the same. Finally, we dropped all rows that had not available or not a number in them and reset the index. 
Next, we converted the ESRB rating genre and platform into numbers using a custom hash function. We first took the unique value of each column and stored it into an array. Then we reordered the array so that the average maturity level of each value would go from small to large. Afterwards, we converted each value from the actual string of the index to the original in the array. For example, shooter games are in general more mature than, let's say, educational games. So the conversion value will be larger. Uh, here, I want to talk a little bit about uh, k-nearest neighbors, which is the algorithm we used uh, in our model. We use, uh, as I said, k and n or k-nearest neighbors. This works by looking at a data point's k-nearest neighbors to define it. For example, if all the nearest neighbors of the data point are E-rated, the data point is very, very likely to be E-rated. Uh, however, if all the data sets nearest neighbors are T-rated, it is also very likely to be T-rated. K, the number of neighbors that we want, can be set by the user, but it defaults to five. For our model, we use the value of seven. We also tried other models such as Lars Lasso and the linear regression. However, KNN is very, very much better performing than each of them. Right, now I'm gonna talk about some visuals. What you see on the screen are three heat maps. Uh, the first heat map is to show correlation between the major factors of a video game, the platform, year, genre, and ESRB. We show this uh, we chose this visual because of our goal of taking success rate based on genre, age range, and year it was introduced to the public. The second heat map here shows the correlation between ratings, raw numbers, uh, with raw numbers, my bad. What's different about this heat map is that it was uh, formed using a confusion matrix. A confusion matrix, in simplest terms, is a tool to represent our model's predictions. On the chart, it shows how many times our model guessed a certain value. That value is then matched up with its actual value, and a number is produced showing how many times it predicted the predicted value for the actual value. For example, if you look up at the top left, we can see our model correctly predicted the rating E 251 times. We chose this visual because it shows our model's consistency with its accuracy. Our final heat map also shows a uh, correlation between ratings, but instead of raw numbers, it represents the values using percentages. This heat map is also formed using confusion matrix. If we take the same top left square, we can see that the 250, 251 times it correctly predicted E translates to a prediction rate of 74%. Now here is a little demonstration. We are gonna predict the game rating. Uh, now guys uh, in the chat, please give us some suggestions. If you don't give us some suggestions, we are just gonna go along and MMO, N64, 2007. What was that platform? N64? Oh, I forgot. N64? Let's try. Let's try. M. We predicted <laughs> it's going to be rated M. 